the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Ago and the numbers bore that out, and then he does it. And the hypo himself was surprised uh, that he was able to pull that out against Sex and M. So I just feel like this year in particular, because the offensive numbers are down all across the board, I just I don't know what to make of Tennessee week to week. So when you look at Kentucky and you look at just how physical Alabama was in the second half and shutting Tennessee's offense down. Do you think it should be expected that Tennessee is able to get up off the mat and go and beat a, a wounded Kentucky team where their quarterback uh, is trying to keep uh, his completion percentage above uh, 50% in SEC play? Um, Expected? M- maybe not. Um, Just because you're right. This team is so unpredictable. But um, you look at the uh, – so, so many people see this game. And, mm-hmm. and again, I think Tennessee is going to win this game. I think Tennessee is going to win this game comfortably. I love the matchup. Um, I think Kentucky, from a quarterback perspective, has been super underwhelming. Um, again, I, I think Tennessee can and, and will win this game comfortably. But I think so many people see this game as just, oh, it's you know that end of the season game along with Vanderbilt to where Tennessee's just going to have no issue. It's a guaranteed dub, guaranteed dub. And Tennessee continues, even with Mark Stoops, I know he's won a couple games, but Tennessee still had a lot of success, even with Mark Stoops as head coach against Kentucky. But this is not that game. Kentucky's different Kentucky's better Kentucky's competitive um Kentucky has attracted a couple of nice players from the portal and and they've won some games um and so I I don't I think fans are expecting a win and I don't think that it necessarily should be expected in the sense of because you just don't know what this team is um the thing that I have that I'm worrisome about this team is is in games when something goes wrong how Hmm. do you respond uh Tennessee in the second quarter against Florida did not respond Tennessee in the third quarter against Alabama did not respond. Now, from one game to the next, you've responded, and that's why I think Tennessee will be okay and and win this game. And certainly, Heupel, you mentioned the record earlier. Um, but <laughs> there's just not been a whole lot of consistencies with this team for sure. So we'll see what happens. Again, I like this matchup for Tennessee. Um, it's going to be a, a nice a nice environment on the road, uh, but not one like the Swamp, in my opinion, or like Athens, Georgia. Uh, but this is a game that Tennessee can win, should win, and better win. Or uh, things will get really bad. <laughs> I mean, if you lose this game, you're looking at seven and five. I think. I think at that point that tells us because I think Mississippi is a much better team uh, than Kentucky to this point in the year. And then obviously Georgia at home to wrap up. And then, I mean, <laughs> not but on the go... flip side of that, so like you mm. think if you lose this game, you're seven and five. On the flip side yeah. of that, you win this game, you you're are seven good. and two going on the road to Missouri. Yeah. You know, and so it's just like it's it's polar opposites to where it could be a horrible year or. Man, a, a pretty a pretty nice looking season heading into a late season game on the road against a team that's you know pretty decent. And then you win that yeah. game, you're eight and two. Come back home against Georgia. I mean, it's um this is a big game for sure. This is a mm-hmm. big game. I had nine and three before the season started. That means you you need to win two of the three in my opinion against yeah. you know two on the road at Kentucky and Missouri, and then of course Georgia. That's taking into account that UConn and Vanderbilt are wins. Uh, so this is a big game in that respect. Yeah, I just. <laughs> It's such a, it's a sneaky big game for them. And I also think Kentucky, you don't really know what you're getting week to week. Because, I mean, remember, this Kentucky team dismantled a Florida team that you lost to on the road very handedly. And, I mean, they do a lot of the stuff that Tennessee does well. And, I mean, or Tennessee uh, will stop a lot of the stuff that Kentucky does well. But I just, <laughs> anyone who's, like, uber confident, like, I'll see some VolQuest posters who are, like, uh, maxing out, like, what uh, – the Vols can do to get to Atlanta still. And I'm like, what world are we living in here? Where I, I don't know if I'm taking crazy pills, but like the optimism and maybe the the feeling there is like how I feel about Alex Perry being the next Cortland, uh, Cortland Lawson over there at shortstop. I see like the, <laughs> just the exact same swing as the, the Juco kid. And I'm like, I'm all in Dylan Dryling, like yeah. Tennessee baseball. I, I'm right there with you. When it comes to this year with this football team, I just, the optimism and just the certainty of going into uh, Lexington on Saturday is and expecting a win and winning comfortably. I just, I'm not there. And I think if you're Hypel and Danny White, what I'm doing right now is I am imploring the league office, like whatever you do, like we're cool on how Bama was officiated on Saturday. If you make the Mizzou game a nooner, because if that game's at night, I just I have a very, very bad feeling, like a South Carolina last year type of vibe. I don't want anything to do with Columbia at night uh, where it's cold. And I think it will be a little bit interesting. Georgia had problems with it last year on the road in the night game. Tennessee obviously destroyed Missouri at the nooner. They destroyed South Carolina at the nooner a couple years ago. I just feel like Tennessee and Hypo. LSU they, last year. Yeah, LSU last year. Virginia this year uh, at 11 a.m. kick for them. They dismantled them. I just... 
that one to me, I've circled where I'm like, if it's a day game, noon game, I'm picking Tennessee. If it's a eight o'clock SEC network game, I think every Tennessee fan should be very concerned about uh, how that game might go. See, and then on the flip side, personally, selfishly mm-hmm. for me, I want that to be a night game because yeah. I'm calling a high school football game the night before. Yeah. And so if it's a nooner, I can't make it. But mm. if it's a seven, I can probably make it to Columbia, Missouri. So I just selfishly, I want to cover the game. Yeah. But you're right. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's nothing it, cold. Um, you know, mm. it's, it, it's, it's, it's a dreadful place if you've ever been yeah. there. I've um, not. And, you know, it's it's a team that's playing well this year, and um, we all made the jokes preseason about the zoo rules. I mean, it was a funny <laughs> video. It deserved all the all the, all the the lack of praise that it got. Um, but they're playing good football right now. Brady yeah. Cook's playing good football. Um, I'm intrigued to see what they look like playing Georgia next weekend. I think that'll be interesting. Um, but uh, certainly we knew the defense was going to be pretty good, and it's it's been pretty decent offensively. I haven't dove into the numbers yet, but certainly that one is um, one that I think – myself included, everybody just kind of assumed that it was going to be one that you have no issue with. Because, I mean, again, you've scored a million points against Missouri the first two years yeah. with Josh Heupel, but this is not the same team as we've – or the same offense as we've seen so far through seven games. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, th- this Kentucky-Missouri game is huge. And yeah, going back to Kentucky, you, you get a win, you're feeling good about yourself, come back, it's UConn, get a win, get a loss. You'll still, you'll still be UConn at home, but – you're not having all that type of momentum heading into another big road game at Mizzou the following week. Do you think Joe made the leap anywhere on Saturday? Because I thought he played a really good game. Second half, obviously, with struggles. And then I think what's t- turning the tide a little bit here with Joe and I think with the fan base is I think they're seeing what's happening with the receivers. I think they're seeing that the receivers are not open, that they're seeing that there's just an element of this team that uh, people understated coming into the year with Jalen Hyde and Cedric Tillman and company's departure. I mean, Ramel Keaton got his confidence back. So I, I think that's huge going into next week is that he was able to do a lot of stuff in the first half squirrels, obviously um, great. And just, uh, we'll see if he has a third uh, insane catch uh, to be had down the stretch here. But I just, I wonder if he made the leap a little bit because he was just so much more confident. I mean, even coming out, throwing arrows at Alabama players, like he was, he was not afraid of the moment. And I think that's a big thing for Tennessee because he, to the, the RPO stuff, I think will always make me. Cool.